Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here, and welcome to my Guitar Pour series. And uh, <laughs> just kind of joking along and a little bit, I mean, just have some ideas, you know, the old uh, adage, this is not your father's Buick. Well, this is your father's Gibson. <laughs> it would be, and thanks to Kelly Barber for uh, allowing me to use this guitar, and I may end up having to keep this. I had it one time before. I'll tell you what he did, he refretted it for me, and he also, well, they had to put a new bridge on it years ago, uh, and the guy at the apprentice shop did that, and uh, used Brazilian rosewood. I talked to him about it, but it left a few little places, little scars here and there, but that's just part of the guitar. Love it, sent from the 50s, it's a J185. They may call it SJ, I'm not sure. But, uh, but it is a small jumbo. Maybe that is it, you know. And that's what uh, Olsen calls his, an SJ series. And, and it's basically the very similar in, in the shape of these guitars. Uh, but Olsen came out with his own dimensions. And they're incredible guitars. I mean, that's what uh, James Taylor's played for many years. But this one came out in the 50s, and it's a shorter scale where the, the Olsen is a long scale. And so this is like a Les Paul. And so it's a totally different guitar, a lot of fun to play. Has a, uh, the same pickup as the uh, Olsen, exactly, same setup. And I just have a preamp with just a volume control in it and an LB6. Great combination. And so we uh, talked about... Uh, John Hall encouraged me to finish this song, A Call to Freedom, and uh, it was my tribute to all of our first responders and also memorials type thing for for those that passed, almost 3,000 people, folks, that died on 9-11. On I had talked to a number of people. One of the guys uh, I talked to was uh, at this very... Uh, uh, fire department here in, in, uh, in Brooklyn. I won't disclose his name, but we've been friends now for a long time, and he did give me the shirt when I first met him and because of this song, and uh, I guess it touched his heart. But he retired Friday before Tuesday, 9-11, and went on vacation, and of course he said all my, most all of my friends died that day, and he'd been with the department for years, retired from it. And he's a, I think he's a luthier now, and a great guitar player, loves music, loves guitars. But uh, big tears in his eyes, said, I don't know why I'm still here, my friends are gone. That's, that's, that was the way he was, the way he felt when I first met him. And I uh, had another man say the same thing. He was in the Pentagon, and I met him uh, at Melody Music, and never forget it, it's just outside of Washington, D.C., in Maryland, and... Uh, he said uh, the nose of the plane came through. I had stepped over to get a cup of coffee. He said uh, one of the other co-workers came and sat in his desk uh, as he was. they were all watching TV and watching what was going on in, in uh, New York. And then the nose of the plane came in and it took the person out that was sitting at his desk. It killed most all the people in the room. It uh, knocked so much rubble on top of him that actually saved his life. Broke bones and everything, but he managed to get out. With tears in his eyes, I don't know why I'm still here and my friends are gone. You know, another man that I met in Brunswick, Georgia, worked for the government. He was in one of the, one of the Twin Towers. He said, I managed to get out, but a lot of my friends didn't make it. I don't know why I'm still here. But he said, that song brought all those memories back to me, and, I, and there are no words. But he said, I needed to hear it and uh, to remind myself that uh, I said, well, God must have a plan for you to still be here. And so I said, you know, thank God every day. Live your life thankfully every day. And also to, with a determination to make a difference in this world. And uh, so having said that, uh, you know, I, I'd like for other people to play this song. And, uh, and uh, we left off. This little part. And then it goes. Now 
that's a, just a B minor. And then you, you go, it goes from a B minor to a D because your bass changes, you know, from your B to down to an A. And you lift your hand up. And now that's an E7, or a sus, actually. E7 sus. And that's like what we would call a 7 flat, but it's a B flat major 7. And then again, lift your hand up for the note. And then drop this... Uh, I just drop my hand off because it's like a, a a an a sus two so but it's like open and then you start with your bass again on your so again Instead of doing, I do the, that's an old Chet trick. Instead of, you get, and you just let that one just sort of ring out. Harmonic. And all along you're doing your bass with going back and forth on your octave D's. Okay. Now this changes So it's the same as it was a while ago, but it goes into a total different thing. Where your hook is now on your bass strings instead. Because listen. And that's where, we're, that's where we'll take off on the next lesson. Hope y'all are getting something out of this. Thanks. A call to freedom.